right, so here's the new R3 Meta by Kef, and check this out. This speaker is absolutely gift wrapped in their new indigo painted finish. Now, usually I'm not a fan of gloss paint, but I have to admit, this looks pretty good. I think it complements Kef's clean design language in a way that results in a luxurious looking speaker. Of course, I know not everybody's going to agree with me on that one, so if blue is not your thing, and it totally should be, then you can go ahead and pick this speaker up in gloss white, gloss black, or in a walnut veneer. Having said that, let's quickly go over the design of this speaker. So what you're getting is a rear ported three-way design that features a one inch aluminum dome tweeter that's in the middle of this five inch aluminum cone woofer. Now this configuration is known as a dual concentric driver and there's two primary benefits to this design. Number one, it allows sound to spread out evenly into your room. And then number two, it allows the engineers the opportunity to achieve really good integration between the highs and the mids. Now beneath that, we are going to have a six and a half inch hybrid aluminum cone woofer that's there to handle the base. So now it's time to move on and address the big question, which is, what is the big difference between the new R3 Meta and the outgoing R3? Because outside of the new color, let's face it guys, the speakers look the same, right? I mean, they're the same size, the same weight, they use the same driver configuration, you even get the same binding post with the same woofer that's there to handle the base. So when I asked Kef this very question, they said, hey look, the changes are all under the hood. For example, the new R3 Meta uses Meta technology, which is basically this maze-like disc that's located behind the tweeter. And the whole point of that disc is to completely eliminate the type of distortion that occurs from whenever sound bounces into the cabinet and then goes right back to the tweeter. Because remember guys, when a speaker is playing sound, it doesn't just project out into your room from the speaker. No, some of that sound will go back into the cabinet, that creates stored energy, and some of that sound is gonna make its way right back to the drivers. And that's exactly what Kef is looking to eliminate from happening, at least within the high frequencies. Now, of course, there's more to it than just slapping a plate behind a tweeter and calling it a day. According to Kef, they had to go in and completely re-engineer this dual concentric array. They had to make a number of modifications, but the biggest one is that they had to create a rear waveguide. That way sound could funnel from the tweeter directly to the meta plate so it could effectively do its job. And all of this meant that they had to re-engineer a new crossover. And this was a blessing in disguise because this allowed them to improve on the off-axis behavior of the original R3. So that is a general overview as to what you're getting with the R3 meta. So now now it's time to talk about what this all means in terms of performance. Let's go. Okay, so let's address the big question just right up front. Are the new R3 Metas a better speaker than the outgoing R3? Of course, it depends on who you ask, but in my opinion, the answer is absolutely. Now look, I know not everybody's going to agree with me here, but I'm pretty sure most of you will, and here's why. Basically what Kef has done is they've preserved what so many people like about the original R3, but then they've successfully addressed the things that a lot of people didn't like about the R3. Meaning you're getting a speaker that's still all about delivering a spacious, clean, and detailed sound, only now the treble is even more detailed, it's smoother, and a lot easier on your ears. The mid-range sounds fuller and it doesn't shout at you. And the bass is going to be a little stronger, which helps the R3 meta to sound like a bigger speaker. And when you add all of those improvements up together, I'm pretty sure most of you are going to feel like it is the better all-around speaker. But as I said, not everybody is going to agree with me there. So if you're somebody who loves the sound of the original R3, or you just prefer a more lively and somewhat dry sound, then yes, you will still like the original R3 over the new meta. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think most of you will feel like the new R3 Meta is more than a worthwhile upgrade. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to like it to even include those of you who may not consider yourselves to be a big fan of the Kef sound. But to really help you determine if this is the right speaker for you, let's go over some details. Okay, so when it comes to performance, what you can expect from the R3 Meta is a compact speaker that delivers excellent, all around performance. This is a speaker for somebody who wants a really resolving and transparent sound, yet you still want it to be easy to listen to. You still wanna have fun listening to your music. And quite frankly, even though there are many speaker manufacturers out now that have done a pretty good job of bridging that gap between a resolving sound and a fun sound, I haven't heard anybody pull it off quite like Kef has with the R3 Meta, at least at this price point, meaning that they're going to sell a ton of these speakers. Most people are really going to like them, to even include people who may not have liked the Kef sound, because basically 
it allows you to get your cake and to eat it too. I can't tell you how many times I hear people say, well, I want to hear a lot of detail within the music. I want to feel like I'm getting a proper high-end listening experience, but I don't want it to sound dry, analytical, or forward-sounding. I still want to have a good time listening to my music, but I don't want to pay a ton of money for it. That's the R3 meta. Now, to help you understand if this really is a good speaker for you, though, we need to go over the details starting with the character. So this is not a neutral speaker. While it's very transparent, it still has its own sound, and I would describe it as being an exciting sound that's on the forward side of neutral, thanks to a little bit of a bump in the treble and in the mid-range. And its overall presentation is very much like a normal Kef speaker. It focuses on spaciousness, detail, and clarity. Only, unlike a lot of other Kef speakers, it doesn't go so far as to sound fatiguing or dry. Now, a lot of this balance between refinement and fun comes from the treble, and I can't believe I am saying this about a Kef speaker, but the treble may be the star to show here, because it has class-leading levels of detail and refinement, yet at the same time, it's not bright. Even though it's slightly exciting sounding, it's not overly aggressive. It's not trying to shove a bunch of high frequency information down your ears. Instead, all of that detail seems to be occurring in an unforced and very natural way. And it's not due to voicing trickery. It's just because this speaker has incredibly low levels of distortion, meaning that it's very easy to pick up on detail but it doesn't sound fatiguing. So you can listen to fancy audiophile recordings and be impressed, but that means you can also turn to recordings that sound like they were recorded in some college kid's bathroom and still have an acceptably fun listening experience. Next, let's move on and talk about the mid-range. This is one of the biggest changes with the R3 meta. The previous R3 had a beamy upper mid-range, and that is no longer nearly as present with the new R3 meta, meaning that you're getting a more balanced sounding mid-range while still getting a little bit of that excitement. Vocals will have this very prominent place within the sound stage. It'll pop out from the speaker, but now it's no longer as fatiguing sounding. In fact, the mid-range even delivers a slightly bigger sense of scale than its predecessor. It has good nuance to it. It's very easy to pick up on subtle little details, and yet there's still body to the sound. And then next, let's talk about the bass. So the bass is where you're going to get a little bit of character here. I think the bass is on the slightly warm side of neutral. How you experience the bass will depend on setup, and I'll talk about that later. But by and large, I think most of you are going to be satisfied with the bass. It has really good note-to-note -note distinction. The texture of the bass is really nice, like a proper high-end speaker. It's not the quickest bass that I've ever heard in my life, but it's definitely not slow either. Uh, it's going to be more of a low distortion bass versus something that's focusing on giving you deep, deep bass. So if you're a bass head, you'll still probably want a subwoofer. I would suggest the KC62 by Kef to go with these speakers. Next, let's talk about imaging. Imaging is good, but this isn't a speaker that's all about giving you a wall-to-wall -wall soundstage. Instead, it's more about giving you really good focus in between the speakers with good layering depth within that soundstage. And when it comes to the dynamics, the hammock output is actually pretty good for a speaker this size. And that actually leads me to the type of music it actually sounds good with, because while it's a really good all-arounder and handles most genres of music pretty well, it's exceptional with handling classical music. That refinement, the ability to deliver a lot of detail and spatial information, that dynamic sound, the way it can handle complex passages without sounding muddy and distorted, serves classical music so well, especially full-scale symphonic pieces. So if you're a big fan of classical music and you have $2,000 to spend, this may be one of the best speakers I've heard for somebody who likes that type of music. Now, it's not perfect, though. The Achilles heel of the R3 meta seems to be music that wants a big, punchy-sounding mid-range, like rock and roll and metal. Or at least I thought that was the Achilles heel until I tried this speaker with some different equipment, which I'll get to in just a moment. But anyways, that is the overview of the performance of this speaker. So now it is time to move on and to give this review some context by going over how it compares to some other products in the same general price range. Let's go. Okay guys, so first, let's talk about how the R3 meta stacks up against the LS50 meta. Now I'm going to start things off with a general summary first, and then I'll dive into a little more detail. And the breakdown goes like this. So basically, 
If you absolutely have to place a speaker next to a wall boundary, or if you're looking for a good desktop solution, then I would encourage you to go with the LS50 Meta over to R3, just because it's a speaker that will perform better in those specific applications. Now, having said that, if you have the ability to pull a speaker away from a wall boundary and out into your room, then I think most of you are going to be a little more satisfied with the sound of the R3 over to long haul. And this is why I say that. So basically, both speakers have the same general Kef sound, it's just the R3 is going to be more refined and of course it's going to give you more of that sound. You get a dedicated bass driver and a larger cabinet so of course it's going to play louder, give you a lot more bass and sound more dynamic and beyond that you're going to get a bigger and more realistic sense of scale in the mid-range and then the treble is going to sound smoother, more refined, it allows detail to pop out in more of a natural way like a proper high-end speaker. But having said that I can still see some of you preferring the sound of the LS50 Meta because it is a well-made simple design that will lay down a huge huge sound stage, wider than what you get with the R3, and plus, in my subjective opinion, it has a little bit more of a lively presentation. So if you value that holographic sound stage and more of an immediate type of sound, then you may very well prefer the LS50 Meta. As always, it's just a matter of taste and application, but this is how I think the two compare to one another, so now it's time to move on to another comparison. All right guys, so now let's talk about how the new R3 Meta compares to the Bacard Audio S400 Mark II, one of the most popular speakers in this price range. And since this comparison can be a whole video to itself, I'll try to keep things short and sweet, so here's my general thoughts on the matter. So first, I think the R3 is the better built speaker. It's bigger, it's heavier, and it offers up superior paint quality. I also like how the R3 can be found in dealers across the world, meaning that at least some of you will be able to hear it first before spending your money. And then when it comes to sound quality, well, that's when these two very different speakers are actually quite evenly matched. Now, before I begin, I need to make it clear that both of these speakers offer excellent all-around performance. They just sound different. For example, I think most people will agree that the Kef R3 gives a more impressive sound. The treble is more spacious and detailed, yet more refined. The mid-range sounds cleaner, and I think the R3 does a better job of handling complex music passages. And it can do all of this without sounding thin, bright, or lacking in bass and dynamic output. And yet, on the flip side, the S400 is going to be the more relaxing sounding speaker. The treble is less sharp, the mid-range sounds a little fuller, and the bass packs a little bit more of a visceral punch. And despite being the smaller speaker, the Bacart sounds every bit as full and as large sounding as the R3. So, which speaker is for you? Well, let me put it this way. If you want an easygoing listening experience, if you want big sound from a small speaker, and you need something that can sound good next to a wall boundary, then I think the S400 Mark II is the way to go, especially if you listen to a lot of rock and electronic music. Having said that, if you want more of a proper high-end listening experience with a lot of detail and refinement, and you can afford to pull these speakers out from the wall, then I think the R3 is going to be the way to go, especially if you listen to a lot of classical music. But anyway, that's gonna be my take on how these two excellent speakers compare to one another, so now it is time to move on. Okay, so now it's time to go over some setup tips that way you know what to do to achieve ideal performance from the R3 Meta. And the good news is, it's a breeze. There are only two things that you really need to bear in mind here. The first is that the R3 Meta is a speaker that sounds its best when you give it room to breathe. So I would encourage you to pull it away from your wall if at all possible. Now you don't have to go crazy here. A foot or more away from the wall, depending on your room, will suffice. But if you wanna get the best sound, the best bass quality, and the best overall tonal balance with the R3 Meta, you need to give it just a little bit of room to breathe. Number two is when you sit down to listen to these speakers, if you want the best integration between the treble, the mid-range, and the bass, then you'll want to make sure that when you sit down that your ear is directly in line with the top dual concentric driver. Now, you don't have to be exactly squarely in line with the driver. There's some wiggle room here. Your ears could be a little bit above the driver or a little bit below. That's fine. You just want to make sure that they're in that general proximity. Otherwise, guys, that's it. The only other advice I can think of is to spread the speakers relatively far apart, tow them in just a little bit, and then enjoy. Easy stuff. So now it's time to talk about equipment matching.
Okay, so the good news is that finding the right amplifier for the R3 meta is actually pretty simple. Still, there are some things that you need to bear in mind, starting with the fact that the R3 meta is a 4 ohm speaker, meaning that before you buy it, you want to make sure that you're connecting it to an amplifier that's capable of handling a steady 4 ohm load. Next, when it comes to power requirements, look, I think most of you are going to be fine with amplifiers that output 50 watts per channel or more depending on your needs. This is a speaker that doesn't need a lot of power, but it responds really well to high quality power. And that leads me to equipment recommendations. So really, I think it makes the most sense to pair up the R3 Meta to amplifiers that cost anywhere between $1,000 and $3,000. Now sure, you can pair it up to amplifiers that cost less than 1000 bucks, and it should sound good, but you may not get the resolution that the speaker is capable of delivering. And of course, you could always go the opposite direction and pair it up to more expensive amplifiers. And while these speakers definitely scale well, I think the $1,000 to $3,000 price point is going to make the most sense for most of you from a value perspective. And that leads me to very specific equipment recommendations because look guys, I tried a lot of different amplifiers with these speakers and the truth is, they aren't that particular about the type of amplifiers that they sound good with. This isn't the kind of speaker that will only sound good with warm sounding class AB amplifiers. I mean, you can pretty much use whatever you want, but still there are three specific recommendations that I have for you guys. The first is the Audiolab 6000A. This is a great choice for those of you who, you don't wanna drop thousands of dollars on an amplifier. And even though I thought this was gonna make for a horrible pairing, it actually sounds really good. You get this detailed, smooth sound that surprisingly enough, doesn't sound dry or thin sounding. I mean, Synergy is a crazy thing, but this is a great match for the money. Next, for a little bit more money, you have the Wilsonton 300i. Now, this is a fantastic match, especially if you listen to mostly rock and roll and metal sound. It has a very full sounding mid-range, an overall warm sound that's just a lot of fun to listen to. The only downside is you're not gonna be able to take it to crazy loud volumes in big rooms, but for most of you, it'll be fine. And then lastly, if you have some money to spend, the Hegel H120 is going to do a fantastic job job of giving you exceptional all around performance. It does a great job of giving you tons of resolution while still giving you that approachable, easy going, slightly warm sound. So that is it for equipment matching. So now it's time to go over some compromises. <laughs> Okay, so while I admit that this has been a rave review, it's time to bring things back down to earth because here's the deal. Even though the Kef R3 Meta is a good all around speaker, it's definitely not perfect and there are some things that you need to be aware of before you make a buying decision. Now to help me out, I have a list and the very first thing on my list is that as I mentioned earlier, the R3 Meta is a speaker that truly sounds its best when you can pull it away from a wall and you can give the speaker some room to breathe. And not everybody will be able to accommodate these requirements. So if you're somebody who's looking for a speaker that'll sound really good right next to a wall, unless you're in a gigantic room, odds are you're gonna find a better solution at this price point. Now, moving on, look, it's a small speaker, meaning that while it can play reasonably loud for a speaker its size, it's not going to be for those of you who are trying to reproduce a rock concert in your living room. So if you listen at volumes of say 93 dB and above on a pretty regular basis, then you'll probably want a bigger speaker than the R3 Meta. Now, conversely, the R3 Meta is not gonna be for somebody who listens predominantly at what I call mouse fart volumes, which is about 67 or so dB or lower. So if you're somebody who listens at those whisper quiet volumes, the R3 Meta is not gonna be a great choice for you because it's a speaker that needs at least a little bit of volume in order to sound full and to strut its stuff. And then lastly, look, Despite all of the improvements that Kef made to the new R3 Meta, it's still a Kef speaker with that classic Kef sound. They still use those metal cone woofers and not everybody is going to like that. But otherwise, that's all I can really think of. Outside of the finish, I mean, if you go with the blue finish, it's gonna attract fingerprints and dust. And if you don't use a high quality microfiber cloth, you might get some little scratches here or there. But if you're worried about that, you just go with the wood veneer or the white finish. Anyways, guys, it is now time to wrap up this review.
So look, when you get right down to it, I think the R3 Meta is an impressive speaker and one that is incredibly easy to recommend because not only does it offer what you expect from Kef speakers, a very clean and detailed sound, it delivers that clarity without the same pitfalls as its predecessor. And on top of that, you're getting class leading refinement as well as this wonderful balance between a resolving sound and one that's easy to listen to. And dare I say, with the right amplifier, even a lot of fun to listen to. I think it's a speaker that many people are going to enjoy. I mean, heck, even I like it. And uh, wait, does that mean I'm becoming a fan of Kef speakers? Oof. Okay, on that bombshell, I think it's time to wrap up this review. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got something valuable out of this review. And until next time, peace.